Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thanks for watching. Behind me is my 2004 Honda Element, and in this video we are going to be replacing the front lower ball joints and also the outer tie rod ends. This information will also apply to CRVs of the same vintage. If you went and purchased the lower ball joint from Honda, they don't have it available separately. You have to purchase the entire knuckle assembly, which contains the bearing and everything else. So if you did go that route, you'd have to remove the knuckle assembly, uh, remove your old hub, uh, get off the old bearing race, and I would replace the bearing at that point, press in a new bearing into the new hub, press the hub assembly back in, put the whole thing back together. I'm not doing that in this video. I'm gonna cover the replacement of just the ball joint itself. There are parts available in the aftermarket. I will link them down in the description so you can find them. I'm going to be using this tool here, which uh, is from PowerBuilt, but I've seen many other tools like it. Now this tool allows you to actually replace everything on the car. Now, as you'll see in the video, I end up removing the hub assembly. So if you needed that information, you have that information, but I did it on the other side without using, without removing the hub and I used this tool. The one thing to take away is make sure you put the nut on the end of the ball joint before you press it out. You'll see what I mean later in the video, but this is the tool that I use. Now this tool can often be rented at your local auto parts store, so uh, keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to buy this tool in order to do this job. You may be able to just rent it from a local tool supplier or your auto parts store. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started with the ball joint and outer tie rod replacement on my 2004 Honda Element. I've already taken the wheels off. Now I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication right back here on the jam nut for the outer tie rod end. Uh, a little bit of penetrating oil. I'm going to do the same on the other side. My thought is that uh, doing the tie rods first might actually make doing the ball joints a little bit easier. Get started with that, I'm going to loosen this jam nut, which is a 24 millimeter. And there we go. Considering that the inner tie rod is rotating the way it is, I'm gonna grab another wrench and hold this so that I can get the nut loose from the inner tie rod also. If you're gonna do outer tie rods or stuff like this, it's still a good idea to get an alignment. There we go. Here's a new part. Both sides are the same. These look the same, which I am grateful for, except for the new unit doesn't have the uh, indentations to put a wrench on it. It did, however, come with a new nut, a Zerk fitting, and wow, two new cotter pins. How fortunate is that? And that's for adding grease when we're all done. There's already some down in there, which you may be able to see. Once it's bottomed out, it's good. Gonna leave it sit like this for now. Work on the ball joints. To get to the ball joint, gonna need to get this axle nut out of the way uh, and the axle. Come to think of it, if you're doing this at home and you don't have impact tools, what I would recommend that you do is you can actually pop the center. Well, if, if you have it on the ground and it's in park, you can put a breaker bar on this and knock it loose. Oh, or you can take out the uh, center cap of the wheel, put a socket through it, and then while this is still on the ground, you can break this loose. Because uh, these can be on there kind of tight. They're no problem for an impact gun. Well, I've done them with electric impact guns too, but you know, just an FYI. I want to tap this a couple of times with a hammer. If it starts to move, great. If it doesn't, we don't want to hit this so much it starts to mushroom out so we can't put the axle nut back on. If uh, you have that, then take the axle nut and, or actually an older axle nut, and you can actually put it on this way. And then hit on the axle nut instead of hitting on the, uh, well, this is hard because this one's been knocked over, but uh, hit on the axle nut. Don't hit on the axle itself. So if it gets stuck, put it on there like this, and then start hitting it like this. 
it's already started moving, so we're all good. But if you got an axle that gets stuck inside the hub, which happens sometimes, do this and that'll make it so you can put the axle nut back on when you're finished. Cutter pins on these ball joints are a little bit different. They're totally 100% reusable if they're not damaged. Uh, but they, they just sort of have this hook that you sort of pull up on. And then once, once you've got that hook pulled up, you can just pull it out. See what I mean about the hook? This one is uh, 17. I'm gonna try the electric impact again. <laughs> the right air pressure and pneumatic tools. Sometimes there just is no substitute. Just like with the tie right ends, I pop them loose like this. These lower control arms can be kind of weak. You can put a pickle fork in here, especially since you're replacing the, the ball joint itself. I just worry about pickle forks because, and pickle fork is a tool that jams in here. I'll link one in the description so you can check it out. But I, I worry about those tearing up these boots because sometimes I've seen them do that. But a few taps here is what I'm hoping will do the trick. There we are. Viewers have sent me suggestions where they have a rig on a pry bar where they can go underneath the control arm and they have something strapped over the top uh, rather than going in like I am here. I thought that was pretty clever. Pull the axle out. This is where not having it hooked up to that tie rod in is working in my favor. I'm gonna use this ball joint I have a receiver cup here, which is actually for installation, not removal, but it's the only thing small enough in the kit to fit over the top of this, because you want to be able to push this up into something. Here's a better view of what I've got. Done some thinking, and I've decided that I am going to take this knuckle assembly up off of here. Main concern is going to be this ABS sensor. I've got to be very careful with this. It's plastic. It can break easily. Once I get this up out of there, I feel like I'm home free. Then there's just these two large fasteners. Uh, then it's a matter of removing the caliper, which is not that difficult. I'm just going to, there's two large fasteners here where I can just remove it, hang it up there by the coil spring. These are 17 and I've got a bungee cord ready to hang the caliper when, I'm, when I've removed it. Might as well take the rotor off too. There's only one screw remaining and it's already loose. Lucky me. You don't have to reinstall these. I get asked about that all the time. They're just there to make assembly easier. I put them in to make assembly easier. <laughs> and I recently did these brakes as you can see. So this is easy. Yep, it always starts with penetrating oil. In fact, I should just get my show sponsored by penetrating oil with all the rusty stuff I seem to work on. Now, if I have any difficulty at all with this, the plan is to just unplug it and bring it all with. You just can't have enough penetrating oil. Yeah, I don't... I think this is coming out with it because I, I have way too many concerns about it not coming out. All that's really going to involve is removing this 10, this 10, and then the connector for it is right here. Orange connectors or ABS connectors. I think it was way easier doing that than it would be trying to fight that. If it's a good ABS sensor, why bother? These are 7 8 or 19 millimeter. And the other side is 19. These aren't cam bolts, so you don't have to worry about an alignment. I talked about that in another video. Uh, yeah, that gets us our knuckle. So far, this is what I've come up with. I've got the same receiving cup that I had when it was up on there. I took 
a nut from the tie rods, the little tie rod ends. I've got new nuts there anyway, and put it on the end here. Part of the problem was is, is this would compress, it would move to one side or another. I'm hoping since these two things are the same size and that this end also rotates, that it helps push it through. So if I'm successful with this, great. If not, well, I guess we're gonna have to go to plan B, but I'm hoping I could show you how to do this without having to buy this whole assembly because this is what you'd have to purchase. And you'd have to deal with uh, getting the hub out and everything else. Why would you want to do that? To make things easier, I mounted this up in my vise, help hold stuff in place so it doesn't go everywhere. That, super awesome. So in theory, you could do this at home. It's a lot easier with impact tools, but you could do it by hand if you absolutely had to. Here's my new ball joint. Close enough anyway. But I'm replacing both sides, so any differences will be spread across both. Normally, I'd be cleaning up this bore, trying to make it go in there better. This new ball joint comes with a snap ring. No grease fitting on this one. Here's our snap ring and our new cotter pin. I'm gonna remove the rubber boot before I install it, because it won't go in otherwise. Simple enough, set that aside. This is just the opposite of what I just did. And uh, hopefully that'll go in. Nailed it. Now for the snap ring. We're ready to install it. Maybe it goes without saying it goes together the opposite way it came apart. Maybe. But if not, that's what it does. This one broke out of its attachment here. I'm just gonna wire tie or zip tie that into place. It seemed easier to do on the bench. The other side I'm gonna try to do it while the knuckle's still in the car. Try and put this axle back in. Eric, does having a lift make it easier to work on cars? Yes, viewer. Yes, it does. Yes, the old nut works, because this nut actually works with that special cotter pin I showed you. I'm not gonna be able to use that, because it doesn't go up on there far enough for the uh, cotter pin hole to be exposed. Need to stake those down, be standard procedure. Like I said, you don't have to put these screws back in, but I think it's helpful. And I always put anti-seize on the threads because I know the rotor's likely gonna have to come off again one day. Seems a bit more convenient to reconnect the tie rod now. I'll shoot a little grease in there, give myself a zip tie and tie this ABS wire up. But this side is done. No more loose ball joint. I know you wouldn't let me get away with not doing this. No worse than it was before. 
And that concludes the lower ball joint outer tie rod replacement on my 2004 Honda Element. And as stated at the beginning of the video, this information will also apply to CRVs of the same vintage. In fact, this applies to a lot of vehicles. Uh, even though this is on a Honda Element, this is pretty much standard procedure. Now, I sometimes hammer out the ball joints, but I found the tool that I used uh, to work a lot better and be a lot less violent. Uh, sometimes you can do some damage with the hammer, although I have been successful doing that. In other words, you can do this on the car. Now, as far as the tool that I used, I'll link that down in the description. As previously stated, you could uh, rent that from your local auto parts store or possibly tool supplier. Uh, once again, I'll link that in the description so you can check that out, along with additional information about this video. I also have another uh, short video that I made available to premium members of the other side. I didn't show that in this video because all the information still applies. But on the other side, I was able to do everything on the car, which it is completely possible to do that. You don't necessarily have to remove the hub, uh, but that tool makes a big difference. And don't, put, don't forget to put that nut on the ball joint to help press it out. That, that helps a great deal. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com. I will also link that in the description, along with additional information, as I stated. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you subscribe, like this video, all that fun stuff. I'll see you next time.